Hello YouTube land. Um, today I'm not making soap. I'm making um, bath bombs. So I thought I would bring you along for the ride. Bring my stool in so I get to sit while I do this. Let me feed up. So um, the movie, the, um, I already got everything ready <laughs> actually. Um, so I decided to, to film it kind of um, as an afterthought. Um, I wanted to show how I do it because um, I think it's brilliant and I don't hate it as much as I used to because it was hard trying to get them to form and be perfect and not fall apart on your tray, which actually still happens, um, but you get over it. Um, and by the way, I don't normally buy it by the package. Um, but unfortunately this is just a little side batch um, because I'm all out of lavender again so again and again so I'm making just a, a one-up batch here so that's why I thought it would be good to make a movie because frankly when I make um, when I make batches like I make like a whole bunch of flavors so well, another reason why I thought that it would be a good idea um, to um, record this is so that we can talk about ingredients because frankly um, there's so much controversy out there about what's good to use, what we should be using, what we shouldn't, there's questionable ingredients and in everything and frankly that's why I got into this business. Um, I, I wanted to, I, I personally, I started this off for myself, I personally could not use a lot of ingredients anymore and I, my skin was just unmanageable and nothing that I was using, of course commercial commercial stuff I was using, um, helped. And out of frustration, and then also it was a bucket list thing because I do eventually want to have a tiny house somewhere um, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I really didn't want to live in the bush and you know, I want to be a hippie but I just didn't want to be a dirty hippie so. <laughs> So I wanted to know how to make soap. I'm a keen hippie. Um, <laughs> um, no pets, any hippies out there. I love hippies. <laughs> okay, so anyways, uh, back to the ingredients. So um, through my journeys, and I've been making, um, I've been at this for two years now. Um, only two years. I'm just a baby. Um, I've come through a lot of, you know, gone through a a lot of journey through reading everything I could possibly find about everything because of course I'm an old lady now and there's no way I'm going back to school at this point in my life I'm just I'm just I'm beyond that so um, I do a lot of self-learning um, I love reading period so and I love learning so anyways um, I'm always on the lookout for um, you know what could possibly not be a good idea so I only started making bath bombs about a year into this I didn't I started making soap like I was just making soap for myself and my family and then my friends and, and then my friends friends and etc so but um, I only started making bath bombs a year ago so about eight months or so ago I came across um, I came across a, a, a website that was was talking about how cornstarch um, can irritate and I'm not even sure how to say the word I apologize eracidate uh, I read too many words and not hear people say them so I'm not sure how to pronounce it but um, it basically means to um, to irritate the issues. Oops, steel for this one is plastic. Excuse me. So, anyways, I um, uh, about the can uh, the cornstarch. That a couple of the reasons why there's two reasons basically why I could find that bath bombs were considered to be any kind of questionable ingredient uh, or questionable for women to use. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Let's take that in there. So, and the two ingredients that that kept coming up as a flag for um, 
for bath bombs is cornstarch and perfumes. So of course, I had already been making bath bombs for a few months and I was using the recipe. I researched lots of recipes, they all seemed to be the same. Um, and that included cornstarch. So I immediately took cornstarch out of my out of my recipe and stopped using it because I mean I mean that's the last thing, you know, like I'm I luckily it's you know in the last years I have not been susceptible for that, but when I was younger and um, of baking baby making years, yeah, like there was issues, right? Oh, you know, this woman. Sorry, there might be guys watching, but anyways. So I stopped using cornstarch and I stopped making my bath bombs with any kind of the perfumes. Now, I do prefer um, Crafters Choice uh, fragrances because they tell me that they're phthalate free and paraben free. Um, but I didn't even want to use those, um, even if it's paraben free. Um, not if a perfume is going to cause urinary tract infections or irritate that sort of thing so um so anyways this uh, uh yeah so I, I changed my recipe out i now use no fillers because basically i couldn't find any reason why cornstarch is added to the bath bomb besides maybe a filler to get more bath bombs out of your mix um so i took it out um, almost immediately when I started making bath bombs, I um, use uh, clays because, like, um, like kaolin clay um, is said to um, draw toxins from your skin. Um, I also use coconut oil just because I don't think there's anything else that's better for you. Alright, so I went, I went and got another uh, quarter cup. This is, um, I, I think this is going to be way too much, but that's okay. Whatever's left, I can just put back in my, in my bucket. Let's take it that far. Okay, and then instead of using water to, um, to harden my bombs, I use alcohol with, uh, free witch hazel. Um, which, uh, witch hazel is great for evening skin tone and minor skin irritations, it helps to calm and play and skin, that sort of thing, which means it's got a big history. So, so as you guys probably noticed before, I'm more than a little uh, OCD about keeping my station clean, but there's no way you can do that with bad bombs. <laughs> and I probably should have used my biggest steel bowl here, and I didn't. Oh, this is coming together a much better. So, let me get that oil back into the I'm going to have to take my glove off for this. So just keep mixing. It is a fairly quick process. You don't want to go too long because you don't want to start drying out your mix. I don't like to work in batches much bigger than this just because I found that yeah, by the time you get to the end of it, you're like, this stuff is dry and it just doesn't want to work anymore. So, so yeah, so baking soda. Baking soda, citric acid. The clay, and, and like I said, green clay, the clay. And I find that the clay also hardens the bar as well, which is, you know, because you don't want this bomb to bomb anywhere but in the bathtub. When I started out, that was totally embarrassing. And the customer actually felt bad and wanted to pay for the bomb, and I'm like, it is not supposed to bomb here. <laughs> so you're not going to be paying for that. That's totally my mistake. So anyways. I have made it my mission to never let that happen again. So I just spray on the witch hazel. Alcohol free. Witch hazel. Love this stuff. Oh, and um, and I do want to mention to my um, my customers who are going to watch probably, hopefully, <laughs> watch my videos. I know some of you do, and I love you. Um, uh, these gloves are not latex gloves, they're vinyl. So, um, just for the people who might have that allergy as well. I try to be as considerate as I possibly can to everybody. Just because, just because I, I want that kind of treatment myself, you know, so I get it back. This is really starting to be a nice mix. I think that was enough. I think I need to add more than that. 
So because um, these have coconut oil in them, to anyone that's watching them or watching this and has not tried my bath bombs or going to make these yourself, the coconut oil is going to make your tub just as soft and silky as you are. So please, when you're getting out of the tub, be careful. All right. So, the second secret to my making my bath bombs, besides my clay and my witch hazel, is these awesome little steel bombs. And I think I got it off uh, eBay, I believe. This is the only place that I could find I was looking for. Oh, let me explain what I'm doing. And they were a really great price, by the way. So, what I discovered that when you're using these is that if you use a spoon, and it's just nicely tapped, but not packed hard, to, um, and then an extra one to make it, and I just press down so that they're both heaping. Press them together, get rid of all the extra. And then just give it a second. You don't even have to do it that long. <clears throat> Leave it. Oops, see, it's still pulling up a little bit of white from the bottom. Not cool. I don't want stripes in this. So, anyways, that's long enough. But what I discovered is that physics. Did you hear it? Just let go. Watch. Wee! Not no. Isn't that magic? So then you just tap, 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 tap with the steel one, and you can tell when it lets go. So there we go. Number one. Used to be a problem. I used to hate this job. And frankly, um, I've discovered when I do markets and stuff that I, I really sell as many bath bombs as I do bars of soap. So these are definitely a hit. I don't want to, um, I don't want to, uh, irritate any skin issue of any way, shape, or form. So as you can see, I'm making a mess and I hate it. Okay. 